welcome to No Instructions. I'm Bob. And I'm Josh. How you doing? Hey. Boy hey. Over there. Yeah. You you I feel like you've spent a lot more time in that office than like the entire time that you've been in that house up until just recently. I feel like you've put more time into that one space. Is that true? That's absolutely true. My wife It could just be cuz like I the only time I see you now is in that office. So. Well, we had a call this morning and I went out on the back deck and so I did our work call outside cuz it was nice, but Tiff was down here working. So, yeah, this has definitely become her office and then I I hang out in here. Because it's nice. <laughs> and if she's doing stuff, like, she has classes to set up at night to prepare for the, the stuff she has in the morning. And so I'll come down here and, like, I've been playing Minecraft with a bunch of online geeks lately. So I'll sit here and play Minecraft while she gets her class ready. But this morning, she, she's she been sewing a bunch of masks. And so she is sewing. The 3D printer is running. So it's kind of loud, especially if I'm trying to do, like, a call. So yeah. I went upstairs and... Sat on the back deck. It was really nice. Hmm. Sun was out. How's it been, like, working from home for you? Terrible. This really? sucks. Yeah. I wanted to tell you, like, Anthony is, is over there. I can see Anthony. He's doing the production for the show. I miss you guys. It's like, weird, isn't it? Like, we get so sucks. used to. Yeah. I am I'm bored. Like, I love my family. <laughs> but, like, the little tiny goofy conversations that we have, I... I underestimated their value mentally. Hmm. Like silly little nonsensical tangential conversations that just make you think about stuff and that are just fun or funny or the conversations we have about like, ooh, what if we did blank? Those little mental exercises that we have. It's like running or doing push-ups or whatever. Like when you haven't done it in a while, you kind of get atrophy and our morning meetings are... <clears throat> excuse me are a lot more um condensed now because like we have projects that we're doing and everybody has their task and we're like does anybody need anything okay good ready break and after the ready break i just come like <sighs> you look forlorn into the off into yeah. the distance <laughs> like, oh. let's talk about something dumb for a minute and <laughs> <laughs> well we can we can allocate dumb time i was just trying to keep people like not keeping people on the call any longer than they need to be but we can like okay everybody done with work let's be stupid for a little while (laughs) it's completely appropriate from a leadership stance but at the same time like i come down here and i'm like okay let's do that stuff we just talked about and it's weird working remotely i feel like my uh, air quotes like work time is far more concentrated and there's less Mm. like just hanging out there there was a ratio while we were all together of hanging out with your friends and productive work and they kind of blurred together and so now when we're just like in our own little individual spaces it is like work work there's less of like hanging out time yeah it's kind of weird though i mean i i miss that part of it and you know you get really used to being around the same especially in in our case because it's just a couple of people you get used to the friendship and the time spent together. And there's a certain amount of our week that we just always spend together. And I miss that from a being with people. But then I was surprised at how much, I guess this isn't in contrast to that, but I was also surprised at how much I enjoy being alone. You know, cause I used to work by myself all the time and I never, it was never like, man, I sure wish I had people to work with. It was like, yeah, you know, you know, but so now that I'm, in the space by myself trying to get things done it's it's like there's a quietness to it which is really nice and uh um i don't know there's there's i guess like a responsibility that i didn't realize i had uh, or i I was putting on myself to the people i work with like if i expect them to work then i need to be working you know what i mean it's like that kind of like you lead through doing kind of thing and so If I expect you guys to be here at my house doing work, then I need to also be in that same space doing work, which is not 100% true. Like, I logically know that, but I just have that feeling. And so then now that I'm here by myself, it's like I'll go be productive for a little while and then internally not feel weird about just, like, Mm -hmm. not doing anything for a few minutes. That's like it's okay because I'm not responsible to anybody right now. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like I played guitar this morning for a while. I was doing That's it for awesome. a video. 
but you know like I had to play a little bit for the video and stuff but then I just like turned off the camera and just stood there and played and one of my kids nice. came down and opened the door and was like your music sounds really good and they went back <laughs> out <laughs> like oh thanks guys <laughs> but it was weird because like w if you guys are here that's a thing that I wouldn't I just wouldn't go do in the middle of the day because it was like, well, it's gonna be loud and it's gonna bother what they're doing, and then it's just like me goofing off while they're working and like I don't want. To. So I don't know. It's been there's definitely a lot of negatives to it, but there's also a f I'm trying to find positives in all of this weirdness that we're dealing with, and that's one of the things I didn't really expect. I'm like, oh, I forgot how much I actually like being alone sometimes. Yeah, not all the time, but it's been interesting. I was talking about it on uh, making it yesterday. It's not out this year or this week yet. But um, did I tell you about the kites? You told me you were flying kites. Yeah. So, like, I have sport kites, stunt kites. And like kite runner have... type kites where, like, you cut the string of the other kite? Uh, no, not like that. Like, you did do you tricks with them. That's a good book. No, I never read that book. That's a good book. Um, so I have some kites that I've had since I was in high school. Excuse me. And... I actually started flying those kites in the field behind our house when it was my grandparents' house. And they're like sport kites. They have two strings, and they're attached. The strings are attached on the sides of the kite. So when you pull one, it leans into the wind that direction, and it goes mm -hmm. that direction. So you can steer it. So you can do tricks, and you can fly it around, and you can bring it down to the ground and then back up. And, you know. and they're a lot of fun. I started flying them when I was in high school. And then in college, I flew them a little bit, tried to take them out to the beach. And then I think the last time I touched them was probably like 15 years ago or something mm. like that. And last week one day, it was really windy. It was over the weekend, and I was just sitting around. The kids got out little single-string kites that they, you know, somebody had given them. And they took them out to the field, and they're like way up in the sky, and they're just taking forever to pull their kite back down, and they're like complaining about like how long it takes. And I'm like... They're going to be out there for a while. I may as well go get my kites, see if they even still work. Like, I don't know. Maybe the, the strings are rotten, you know. And so I brought these things out there. The kids didn't even know I had them. I set them up, and immediately, and it was like probably 15-mile-an-hour winds. Mm. So I, like, pull the strings. This thing shoots up, and I had that feeling, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I used to love this. <laughs> like, I loved this. And I completely forgot the feeling. And so I'm, like, flying this thing around, and the kids are just like, how are you doing making it do loops and twists and figure eights and stuff? And so, you know, over the course of that afternoon, they all got to try them. I have different types of kites that fly different ways, and some of them are faster, some of them are slower, and I ended up trying out most of those. But, man, it was so weird to just be like, here's a thing that I used to love doing, a hobby that has no pr you know, like practical purpose. It has no productive purpose. It was just a thing that I like, and I completely forgot about it. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I was confronted with, oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> and it was really cool. And then just realizing that we have a perfect space for it again. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take time to do. There's no, oh, we don't have to go anywhere to do it. We don't have to set up stuff. It, you know, it's just like, this should be a thing that I, I don't forget about, right? This yeah. should be a thing that I enjoy, let the kids enjoy with me. And that was, that may have been two weeks ago. I don't remember exactly. Since then, I've ordered two kites. <laughs> There's <laughs> the Bob Claggett I know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One of my sons spent his own money on his own kite, and he's out there flying it right now. And we've cool. been waiting because today there's like 13-mile-an-hour winds, and we've been, like, watching the weather. We're like, Tuesday's the day. We're going to go out and go fly. Oh, so after I get done this afternoon, we're going to go out and all fly kites together. I don't know. It's that's just cool. kind of cool. Like, it's just one of those... Like being like realizing that I like being alone a little bit more than I remembered. It's just one of those things I'd forgotten about myself, you know. It's I don't think I would have been reminded of that had we not been in this kind of crazy situation. I don't know. It's been there's crazy. there's a lot of benefits to this. Like I, I'm trying to find the positive every day because I think I have found myself the last couple of days like dipping into the like boredom, like. What am I really even doing today? Like, did I take mm. a shower yesterday? Kind of like destructive, kind of non-productive thinking. Yeah. And uh, I was down here in the office yesterday, and in the video of the secret office, people thought that the doorway in the office was how you get in, and it was very confusing. But that door is a utility closet where a furnace and stuff is. 
well, there was water leaking under the wall into the carpet. And Ooh. I guess where the air conditioner condenser, like, little drip thing is, like the one you have in your shop that makes noises randomly. Mm, yeah. The pipe that that thing drips into was clogged. And it was overflowing. And so I was down here trying to fix that. And it was like, every little day I find something like, okay, I've never done this before. This is not an emergency. Let's figure this out. So right. I went to Harbor Freight and I got a snake and snake didn't work. And it was too short. You know, and so I... Can I give you a tip on that? Yeah. Clorox bleach. Hmm. Take a, you go to the highest point of the, whatever that hose is that you can get into. Um, take a funnel and just pour in, not a lot, but a little bit of Clorox until it bubbles up. And that will eat all the mildew and everything that's grown on the inside of that thing, and it will flush itself out. And then you do that once or twice. You do that every about six months, and you're good. Hmm. Well, this was it in the pipe too, so. that, like, it drains into, like the one into the ground. And I'm sure I could do the same thing. Yeah. But the snake I had wasn't long enough. I had to call a plumber, and a plumber came out today, and it was like, oh, you're a stranger in these lands. <laughs> People. <laughs> it's a different person. and. Like, my neighbors have been out mowing the grass, and so, like, I've, I've had communication with people, like, yeah. at the reasonable distance. I went out and had uh, coffee with our, our friend Matt, the opera singer. Like, <laughs> he he was getting a whole lot of cabin fever, and I'm like, well, let's go get some coffee. And so we went downtown, sat on the benches that are, like, eight feet away from each other, like, <laughs> had a coffee date. It was really nice. That's cool. And I think before all this, like, I would... I don't know. My life has been an ebb and flow. Like, I'm a, a huge people person. I love being around. I love entertaining. I like making people laugh. And while I was in the military, like, I I dialed that back a lot. Like, I didn't want to be around other people. I didn't want to bother people. I could very easily be by myself and be completely happy. And then coming here, like, working in a small group of people, like, becoming part of a community, like, on a lar not just for work, like, in a larger sense, in the town and church and friends and, like... I really like that that community. And now that we're being forced to not have that community, I default to like, oh, it's fine. I'm kind of like a, an introvert recluse anyway. And mm. I think this is kind to tell me that, no, you're not. <laughs> you want to go oh, out yeah. and just talk to people and fellowship and enjoy the time of others. And so I've been trying to do that in a responsible way. And the not only was it like somebody came over to the house, like a stranger came over to the house. And so I came downstairs, and it's through the secret office, and the guy just kind of, like, stopped in the outer room while I opened the door. And he was like, what in the world was that? <laughs> and, and just like, <laughs> it is so much fun when someone comes into the house and they have no idea that we have a secret office. And we walk in here, and it's just like this nerdy little 3D printers going kind of cave. And the dude just, like, stopped. And looked all around and was like, what in the world is this and how much did it cost? I'm like, oh, we made it ourselves." And I told him about the channel. And But, like, getting to see somebody excited and happy over something that we made, like, especially right now, there was no mm. conversations about viruses. It was all silliness about, like, this secret office and sludge and a pipe. It was like a normal conversation. Right. It was yeah. really uplifting to have a normal conversation with someone that I didn't know. Hmm. Yeah. And I guess yeah, I missed that's... it more than I thought I would. Right. Yeah. It It's funny. I mean, there's certain parts of that stuff. Like, I, I really do feel like I'm kind of down the middle on this whole separation thing. There's part of me that just loves it. Like, I, I, I mean, not that I, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I miss my friends. I miss my family. You know, I haven't seen my parents in like a month. Well, I mean, they came over and like we talked to them. They were in the car and we were inside our back porch and we talked to them 20 feet away, you know. Mm. Um, but like we haven't gone to lunch with them. That's just something we all, all of us typically it's do today. Every yeah, weekends. lunch yeah. day. And so, um, so I miss that stuff for sure. But then there's part of me that's just like we're not. We don't have practices. There's there's no gymnastics. There's no soccer. There's no uh, piano. There's no stuff to do every night. You know, we don't have church one night a week. We don't have to figure out who's going to what practice and who has to take who to drop off. The th it's just like we're home. That's the default. And that's something that I've gotten n a used to. Like that just never happens anymore. Like the, yeah. if, if there's a weeknight and we're all home, that's odd. 
and um, and I really like that. I really like being done with my own work for the day and walking upstairs and knowing that from then until I go to sleep is 100% open. Nobody has any plans. We can do or not do whatever we want. And it's kind of a breath of fresh air. I mean, granted, all the other stuff around it sucks. Being scared about going to the grocery store kind of sucks. And all of that. And, and I guess I was also thinking that way. Also, gave me a little like man how privileged yeah that that I don't look at this situation as like how am I going to eat you know because there's a lot of people right now who are just like they're struggling because of all the separation and and like financially and and I and I don't want to diminish that at all I recognize that that's there I recognize that I'm privileged enough not to have to deal with that right now but as far as just from the our family has turned inward a little bit for now and is looking at each other more. My kids are becoming better friends and I can see it happening. Hmm. I'm spending more time with them individually and like I'm playing basketball with them and I'm just because we're here, not because I didn't want to do those things before, not because they don't want to be friends, just because they're so scattered and we're all just doing so much stuff all the time. And so just being in a place to where we can't leave is like forcing everybody to get to know each other better. (laughs) I think that's kind of cool, you know? And also, I mean, you know, you look at Facebook or you look at any other group of people talking and it's a little disheartening to me to see all the people talking about how terrible it is that they have to spend so much time with their kids because that's out there. Like there's so many people and I get that it's a struggle. It's hard. It's not, I'm not saying it's easy and like you should just enjoy every little piece of it, but it bums me out that people are like irritated that they have to be around their own family so much. Hmm. Like, oh, that's tough, you know? I mean, it, it bums me out for them because I wish everybody had the family that, that they would relish the time, you know, and and not like be disappointed that they can't go somewhere else. Like that, that makes me sad, but I see a lot of that out there. And I think seeing that and it making me sad is making me have to look at my own family and my own time and just think like, I got to do, I got to do opposite. I have to feel opposite of that. I have to feel, I have to take advantage of this because I mean, honestly, this is all going to go away at some point and things will slowly, but eventually get back to normal and people will get busy again. And people will be consumed by the stuff that they have to do every day. Uh And people will be going all over the place and not faced inward again to their own family or to their own spouse or their own whoever. And, you know, this will go back to normal. And I want to make sure that I don't look back on this time and be like, man, that was a perfect opportunity to do more, you know, and to yeah. spend time more and to play more and to all those things. And I just missed it because I was grumpy because I think that's what's happening with a lot of people. It makes me sad. I wonder if that frustration is kind of correlated to people's frustrations with the, the virus in general. Cause I think that my first, I, I'm trying to lead back to the root cause. So, like, the frustrations I have with my kids individually are are when that they want more from me than I can give. So, like, I'm distracted or I'm impatient or I have Mm. something else on my mind and they're just, like, nip, 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 like, trying to nip at me. And I think maybe people's frustration and their impatience with that is a result of, like, they don't know when they're going back to work or they don't know when things are going to be normalized again. And so they're they're looking out on this, this moving horizon. It's like this can be over then instead of just kind of if you're able to mentally let go of that constantly moving goalpost right and just go like i'm i'm right here right now i'm not looking out into the shadow because you don't know when the shadow is going to stop like you're talking about so it's it's kind of counterproductive to just be focused on like when is this going to finish when am i going to go back to work when am i going to do this because, I mean, it, my my sister-in-law, she just got furloughed from her job. And she's like, this, it kind of sucks. She's like, 
she took a furlough instead of other people because my brother's in the military, so like they're they're okay. His job is secure. Hers wasn't. So she took the kind of acts so that other people wouldn't have to. And so now she's going to file for unemployment. And each state, I'm, I'm imagining, it has a different process for that. But like once you do that, and once all that stuff is in the mix, like you're kind of hands off at that point. There's not a whole lot else hmm. you can do. I think you have to submit a certain amount of resumes or something every so often. But once the reality of your situation sets in, and I think right about now, a lot of people's may be getting upset. Like a lot of things might be changing for them. And I, I think if there's anything that we can help with that, it would be like there's only so many things that are, that are in your control. And then once you've run down that list of things that you don't have control over, then spin around and go take care of the people that are immediately around you. Because your kids right. don't realize that you go to work to make money to have lights on or water on. That stuff does not equate to them. They see me, they see you, they see everybody at the house now, and they're like, my dad or my mom is here with me. That's Dude. awesome. They don't equate to, like, you not going to work, meaning, like, financial hardships and, like, changes for them. They're just looking at their parents being home. And so if there's a right. big distraction while you may not want to be at home with your kids because you find it counterproductive to their longevity or your financial gain. Like, if, if you're stuck in a place where you can't, then just kind of... It's super difficult, and I was in that position, and it was really hard while we were in the RV. And Tiff told me, she's like, you just have to let that go. She's like, right now, you don't need to worry about that because there's nothing you can do about it. And so you can make plans. You can send those plans off into the ether, take a breath, and let those things go, and try to focus on, on your kids. And <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy when there's a lot of them, and they're all very needy. I get that. I am living that. <laughs> but they have asked. That's one thing I've been more attuned to since I've been home is they've asked to do stuff with me. I'm like, hmm. why should I say no? Like, what else do I have to do? What is so important right now Yeah, right. that I can turn them away when all of, all they have in their day is the stuff that is in their house? The newest, coolest toy in their house is you. <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> and they want to play with you yeah <laughs> so go jump on the stinking trampoline they want yeah. me to jump on the trampoline so bad <laughs> and I think I'm going to save it for their collective like for their 18th birthdays <laughs> I will jump on it with them as their like graduation or wedding present so it will mean that much and then they'll shed a tear that I finally jump on the trampoline <laughs> but like the motorcycle um, I don't know what I'm doing on the motorcycle, so I'm just kind of tinkering around. That motorcycle is filled with screws and bolts and little things that they can unscrew. I don't know what it does. They're not going to break it any more than I'm going to break it. <laughs> so come on out. Yeah. We did the sidewalk chalk thing yesterday where my wife just took a bunch of painter's tape and made like a mosaic kind of um, stained glass looking pattern, and then they just colored in all the little pieces. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I handed them chalk. That's all I needed to do. It's, hmm. I don't know if, if, I know my perspective of, like, dad come out and play with us involves so many steps, right, in my head. To adequately satiate these children, I need to be able to do all of these things. And a lot of times, it's just you being near them. Yeah. Or, like, that, that may be enough. I've read the same book about 50 times, but it brings a <laughs> smile on that kid's face every time I read the exact same book. So I make up silly voices, and it's fun for me. I, yeah. read, I read all the stories in character when my wife does it, and they get a kick out of it. All three of my kids, four, five, and nine, I could be reading the goofiest, like the, um, the Little Critters books, you know those, by Mercer oh, yeah. Mayer? Yeah. Yep. Read the garbage out of those books. So I make silly voices. My nine-year-old comes and sits down, eats it up. It's not a video game walkthrough. It's not playing Minecraft. It's reading <laughs> Little Critters. But when you do it in a silly way, yep. then everybody's engaged. 
And so that that's not to say that it takes like a, an ounce of effort to satiate a kid because I think any parent knows it takes an ounce every single second of the day to satiate a kid. Yeah. Yeah. But don't automatically default to no or you guys go play or go or go or go because you are the newest coolest toy in your house and yeah it it will mean a lot more to them right now and in the future that that weird time when their mom or dad was home when they shouldn't have been home they have fond memories of that and i think that Hopefully, when I'm in the nursing home later on, they're going to be a little nicer to me and get me an upgraded bed because of the time that <laughs> I spent with them now. <laughs> I, I ran across <clears throat> um, Facebook gave me a reminder of a quote that I posted several years ago. I don't know when it was, but it was this morning. And the quote was from Chuck Swindoll, which I recognize the name, but I'm not sure why I recognize the name. Um but the quote was, each day of our lives, we make deposits in the memory banks of our children. Mm. And, I mean, that would be applicable at any time, right? But right mm. now, it's like, yeah. Like, right now, if you look at that perspective, we are being paid extra. We are having more opportunities to invest mm. in their memory banks than we ever would otherwise because we're spending more time around them. We're home more than we probably ever will be for the rest of our lives unless we're independently wealthy and don't have to work. And, I mean, that that was just a random but nice reminder, like just what you're saying, all the all those little moments that don't necessarily take effort um, aren't a big investment as far as, like, what you're doing or you know preparation or any of that just like being there just being around that stuff will all add up and it will make a difference you know in the long term is how they relate to us and how they when they think of you the thing that comes to mind is important yep and in a lot of families that's i love my mom dad but they're busy i love my mom dad but they're uh you know stressed they're anxious, they're whatever, gone. And good grief, if we can make that that little thing that they say positive just by being around, uh, that seems like a no-brainer. It seems like we should do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm with you on the trampoline, man. Like, my kids have been trying to get me on the trampoline every day, all day, for a while now. And... And I get on there with them, but man, it's not as much fun to jump on a trampoline when you're in your 40s than when you're in your 10s, you know? Yeah, because they have so much fun on that trampoline. And I'm like, good yeah. God, that looks like a lot of... <laughs> like, I'm I'm exhausted right now watching you guys. <laughs> it's but the best me, money like, I've ever spent, for sure. True. But not for me. Well, we have the pool in the background, and the pool is still covered because we've had like two 80-degree days, and the water is probably in the 50s. Yeah. But every day I'm out in the sun, is I'm like, man, I want to open the pool. I'm going to open the pool right now, and I want to go swimming. I'm like, well, that's probably a terrible idea, and I probably <laughs> need to wait a little longer. <laughs> but to me, like, you're talking about going and, and flying kites. Like, I look at that pool, and I'm like, I want to swim. That's all I want to do. I can't go to the gym and swim. I have this thing in my backyard. It's covered up. It's got the algae, gross, nasty water on the top of it. And I'm like, I just – Coronavirus. If we could just bump this like a couple months into the warmer <laughs> season, that would be dope. Because I would just I would sleep on a floating like raft on that pool. You've got a wetsuit. I do, but my kids don't. And so yeah. I could jump in and I can play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could. I could. <laughs> I could. There's a scuba diving place in Louisville. I can go rent a tank and just hang out underwater for a very long time. Be but, your new office. <laughs> be my new underwater office. But like time to do things that you haven't done. I think the motorcycle is a really big one for me because I was really nervous going to get it. Because I think like we've talked about on here, being in Kentucky and working now at I Like to Make Stuff has given me a different perspective on longevity. And it's allowed me to slow down because we can now have a longer term plan rather than being our military or military contracting type lifestyle where we have to move every two years. So in that longer breath, I'm like, well, maybe the motorcycle will get done years from now. 
because I'll hmm. maybe take a little something off here and there. And it'll kind of be like an R2-D2, but maybe slower, because I didn't know what I was doing, and it just seemed long. And now that we're, we're quarantined, or not even quarantined, like we're just here at the house, I'm able to, to climb that ladder a whole lot faster hmm. than I previously thought. And I can make a lot more progress than I previously thought. And it's hugely motivating. Hmm. And getting the kids out, and they're asking me questions, and I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, this thing puts air inside that engine, and it turns that chain, and it turns that wheel. Sure, that's right. Don't ask me to go any deeper than that. <laughs> but they're like, Dad, can I help you? I'm like, you can absolutely help me. Yeah. And there's, there's like, the, the bees are getting out, and my older son doesn't like bees, so I'm helping him, like, conquer his fear of bees, which is ridiculous watching him. Tiff was explaining to me like he lost his mind the other day hmm. and I didn't fully grasp it until I'm like, all right, let's go outside. It's nice. And there was a bee like 50 yards away, freaked out, screaming, 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 like neighbors down the street are calling the police kind of screaming, ran inside. Wow. So little by little, I, I helped him kind of get over his fear played the the beehive video where i talked about all three of us being really nervous and scared around these bees and then it really coming nothing showed him your instagram story where you got the new beehive and he's like he's wearing a mask he's wearing gloves he's getting stung all over the place and then the very next frame is like i haven't been stung at all <laughs> i don't really need these gloves so then he kind of showed up hmm. but it little things like that i wouldn't have either been around or I would oh, have just, right. like, blown off as, like, you are an irrational, crazy human being. Go away from me. But now I can take the time, and every day we can work on not being afraid of bees. Hmm. And that's something that I didn't think I would have had time to do or would have been that important. But hopefully it has a longer-term effect than yeah. sitting down coloring a picture. Well, it's interesting, too, because that, that probably has multiple effects right you just spending that time helped him with his fear of bees but it also showed him that his dad was willing to invest in him to help him past something that was bothering him and those are two they're obviously the same thing but they're all two separate things too there's like a a, a practical this is i'm afraid of x and i don't want to be mm -hmm. afraid of x anymore but then also just like you know you're dad being there to help you through something that you don't know how to help yourself through like that means a lot in the long term and it's it's super easy for us not even to realize the that type of impact that we're having jumping on the trampoline it's one of those things it's like it may be fun for them in that one moment and that's the thing that we're thinking about yeah i'll give them this little bit of joy by playing with them on the trampoline but it also shows them that they're that as a and this isn't to you this is to me as a parent, you're willing to step out of your own comfort zone for the sake of being with them. Not like, because, like, you know, I'll go out there and I'm like, hey, guys, I'll just, I'll stand out here and watch you guys jump. and I'll be out here with you. That's not the same as I'm uncomfortable, my legs hurt from running, but I'm going to get on here anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like a step past, like, doing the comfortable thing at a distance with them. And I think all of these little things that we're talking about, like they all have some sort of a, an immediate impact and then probably some bigger, longer impact, I hope. I mean, I, I don't really know. But it's just weird how much stuff this whole thing has brought up that is unrelated to a virus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, anyway, it's just, <clears throat> you know, like I, um, I'm – watching the news because I'm curious but then I have never been so depressed to watch the news you know to look at news websites and I just find myself going down these holes where I'm just like this is bad like that's bad and this is I don't know how this is going to turn out and it's affecting those people in this way and those people and and I just get in this kind of spiral I've never been like that I've never been one to I've always been the I think the type of person when I start seeing myself surrounded by bad surrounded by doom and gloom i'm like all right i'm out i'm gonna go find something else to do and be <laughs> you know what i mean like mm -hmm. not to ignore it but like i'm not gonna get sucked down into this i'm gonna find good yeah and during all this i've found myself just like going from news site to news site and just like ugh, maybe this one will be better Ugh, maybe this you know and i just get in this like Bleh. 
I've never there, done that. There's a term that people have coined. It's called doom scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. I saw doom surfing. But yeah. Doom surfing, yeah. That's all yeah. Twitter is right now. Twitter is just Actually, it's, it's doom surfing and then people 3D printing things that are nice. So, like, <laughs> it's, it's a battle. It's a battle yeah. between, like, look at all these people that are doing these things wrong in government. And my these are real life cases of people that I know that are getting sick. And then there's like the the nerdiest people with their robots are like, We're trying to do good. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, maybe it's just who I follow on Twitter. Because I unfollow absolutely anybody that tweets something that makes me feel bleh at all. Yeah. So no politics, no news. It's all like people and vintage this and that and i like architecture and legos and it's just like it's just stuff i enjoy seeing right that's i try to keep it to that but when i go through my twitter i was looking through right now it's like people are coming up with all sorts of crazy recipes that they've never seen before and people are learning to sew when they didn't know how to sew before and people are gardening and people are building things when they've never built stuff before and that's what i'm seeing and so my twitter is like oh wow (laughs) <laughs> look Look at all the cool stuff that's happening because people are stuck at home. That's awesome. Yep. I know that's not all of it, obviously, but it's um, – so for me, watching, uh, looking at Twitter is relatively uplifting and kind of, like, refreshing and stuff. And then I go to any website. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no, <laughs> can't be here. But it, my point in all that was just that, you know, there's – there's so many other things that I'm finding out about myself and about my kids and about my wife and just the conversations that we're having and the time that we're spending and the things that we're choosing to spend our free time on is very different than what I would have expected. You know, um, hmm. if I was given a free Saturday with no attachment and no, you know, I didn't feel like I had to do anything, how would I have spent that day? And now that's basically every day. And I'm spending those days very differently than I would have, hmm. than, than I think I would have, you know. I don't know. It's, it's a bunch of new stuff. And, I mean, you know, there's all the uh, the actual virus-related stuff is bumming me out, too, just because I know, I think I know, I think I know two people personally who've gotten sick, and I think they're both going to be okay. But that's really weird that brought it a lot closer to home and a lot um and then just like really strange stuff like i we have some friends in savannah and one of our friends sister died two days ago and wasn't related to the virus she just didn't wake up and that is it's such a sad and such a weird thing it breaks my heart because they lost somebody close to him, but also because like they can't have a service. Yeah. And and we we know the person who died and their kids and their extended family and their extended family and they're all tied to all of our friends in Savannah. And like so it's not just like one person, you know, some it's like this big network of people who would care and who would be there and none of them can be there. And I don't know. It just it's just like a bunch of weird stuff. And I'm trying really hard to look at all the good, you know, and enjoy all these things about our kids that we're talking about and all these hobbies and all this stuff. But then there's these just really big, personal, heavy things that I just keep seeing at a distance, luckily. But I, don't I think know, that's I don't have a point to that. It's just tough. <laughs> no, I mean, that's I think that's something that people can be aware of that. Uh, my wife and I were talking last night, like I was FaceTiming my brother and my, my niece and nephew, and it was really nice. And I haven't seen my, my niece like we haven't FaceTimed in a long time. And then looking at my brother, <laughs> my brother is three years older than me and is a he's in the Navy. And he looks a lot more like my dad than he used to. And so the way he was like carrying mm. his phone while we were FaceTiming, like under his chin near his pocket when he wasn't paying attention, looked like my dad. And then he was <laughs> whining about um, how he... Um, how he didn't want to leave the base because everything was just nice and convenient on base. I was like, Oh God, you are exactly like dad. I was like, this is weird. <laughs> and then looking at my niece, it was, it was a super nice conversation. And then I was thinking like through the list of people that I wanted to talk to. And my mom came up 
I'm like, man, I just want to talk to my mom right now because mm. I want to get her perspective. Like, she's a nurse. She would probably be working. And my niece was the only grandchild that my mom got to meet. And so, like, I had a whole flood of emotions, and I, I was just thinking down this long rabbit hole, and not to get, like, really sad or depressed about it, but I was thinking about, like, when she had passed away, and then I immediately got on a plane, and the Army took me to Europe. And so I was busy. And so when bad things kind of happened, I think as a defense mechanism or as a way to kind of cope, a lot of people stay busy. And so not virus-related, but if something devastating is kind of happening right now, there's not a lot of ways for people to just stay busy as a oh, coping right. mechanism. Yeah. And so those things right now can feel, I mean, they're lofty and they're weighty on their own, not to detract from that, but it could probably feel a whole lot worse right now because you have nothing to do but think about it. Hmm. And so if something is really weighty or if something bad has happened like that, you have to reach out to people to talk to them because that was something I did not do. I didn't do it at all. I had a really unhealthy reaction to losing my mom and losing some friends and it was because i didn't notice how it was affecting me because i was just i was in the military like i was just going going non-stop and then when i had time to breathe that's when it all like like it, on a train like when the engine slams on the brakes it still has all the cars and the rest of the train behind it and their momentum just kind of pushing like that's how it happened and hmm. so right now if your train is just boom stopped moving your busyness it could be really really overwhelming to have something kind of bad happen and I, I found that yesterday like in a silly little thing like talking to my niece i'm like dude she's 13 now i'm like well that's crazy and then that started all these weird little trickle things but and i i know that about myself that staying busy kind of helps cope and so the situation that uh, i know your wife is i don't know that she was friends with him but it, it's you have to realize that if you are in a hard place with that right now, seek help earlier than you would yeah. if you were busy and you didn't really think about it or you were okay for a little while. That lead time up to you not being okay is a lot shorter because hmm. you have a lot more idle time. So when something bad happens, like you, you have to forego the inward reflection and just start talking to somebody. Because it's it's the those those cars in the train are, are coming. Hmm. Have somebody there to help you kinda shoulder that weight. That's that's really good advice. I would not have thought of that. But I'm sure that's probably happening a lot. I mean there's a lot of loss happening right now too. Yeah. On top of the other, you know the financial struggles and the uncertainty about jobs and all of that stuff, which can be enough of a stress, but there's a lot of people losing people right now, too, which yeah. is kind of crazy. On well, a brighter note, yeah. I found toilet paper at the store the other day. I saw that. It wasn't the kind I would normally buy, but you know what? The, you can't be – beggars can't be choosers. Was it a more ply or fewer ply than you're used to? <laughs> um, I think it was the same ply. It was the slick kind. It didn't have ridges or any of the, like, Oh, dimples. no patterning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no texture. It was texture. paper. You can use it how you want to use it. <laughs> That's funny. I've started getting um, bidet commercials on like Instagram and stuff now. Smart. Yeah. Yep. They're they're out there. The bidet has been uh, a, a great luxury in this whole thing. It's allow a majority of the people in this house to fend off the need. Therefore, I guess donating my potential supply of toilet paper the opportunity cost of toilet paper is now open to the public <laughs> but it's it's silly because we have like the stand where like the the toilet paper hangs on the roll and then you put excess ones on on the the post that yeah. holds the toilet paper roll and uh having to like take one off of the the stand and put it on the roll you're like oh boy <laughs> we're down one I think, oh man <laughs> somebody said it was like looking at the petals on the flower at Beauty and the Beast when the petals start falling <laughs> off <laughs> That's pretty sun's funny. getting a little low in the sky there big fella <laughs> well so what have you been doing other than the motorcycle um, have you been like finding other things to do that you haven't done a lot of before little odd jobs little things that I walk around the house and little things that annoy me 
or that have annoyed me and I've just kind of like forgotten about it, I've been trying to take care of those. Hmm. Um, the built-ins we have upstairs, there was this one cabinet that I never put shelves in. And so it's just like a big empty cabinet and the kids throw a bunch of just junk in there. So I made a thing for that. Um, Tiff is upset that all of our like cutting boards and things that go in this one cabinet like slide all around and fall on top of each other and creates a big mess. <laughs> so like I need to make a little separator. The motorcycle has consumed a lot of my attention because in the last week, a lot of parts have showed up hmm. or it's time to like fabricate things. Um, and it's pushing my skills and pushing my confidence a little bit further. Uh, I mocked up a box that will like hold the battery and all the electronics components out of cardboard. And I, it's like, it's got compound angles and it's, it's very angular. It's kind of cool looking. I'm like, dang, how in the world am I going to translate this to wood? Mm. And I figured it out. Oh, yeah? On my list of stuff has go get a digital protractor because on my cardboard thing, it's got weird angles on it. And I could just measure them and transfer that measurement to my table saw and cut the things. I went to Harbor Freight one day. I couldn't find one. And I'm like, well, how am I going to do this? And my son has been doing geometry uh, in his math lesson. And I went... I can do this. I know how to do geometry. I know how to do trig. I can do this. So I went out and I, I calculated all of these angles and I figured it out. And I'm like, this nice. is awesome. And I, I yanked his little butt up from the computer. And I'm like, come here, boy. Math in action. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. Yeah, so I have the, the side wings. I have the bottom. I have the back. And... Oh, it's also like problem solving on the table saw. I have a nice zero clearance insert, and I don't want to make my blade. I don't want to put a bevel on my blade with that zero clearance insert because it makes the hole bigger. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, so how do I do that? And so now I've taken out the throat plate, put the blade at the weird angle, and then run a big long piece of half inch MDF like through the blade and stop it. And then I clamp it to the back of the table saw. Oh, yeah. So I make idea. like an elevated zero clearance throat plate. And I just cut the piece on top of that piece of MDF. Nice. Yeah. And I was like, it took me a day and I, I stopped and I'm like, well, crap, I don't know how to do this. And then I came back the next day and looked at it. I'm like, oh, I can just do this, 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 boom, 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 boom. And it, it's, it's really motivating to like go, ugh, I'm at a loss. And then come back the next day kind of fresh and just take a MacGyver scanner around the room. I'm like, oh, that thing, I'm pretty sure it could do the same thing. It's not in the typical way I would normally do it. Work like a champ. Hmm. That's awesome. So now I cut one piece wrong because I did my math wrong. And if I, I can make these two more cuts, that whole box can go together. And so the whole electronics box, it's not a, I know I made it out of walnut. People on Instagram don't yell at me. I think it'll be fine. If not, I'll fix it. <laughs> but I've got this beautiful walnut box that is like matched to the angles of the motorcycle frame and fits right in the little nook where the air cleaner and stuff goes. Hmm. It's it's cool. That's awesome. And now I just need to the the seat hoop, I think is what it's called, the seat hoop where the seat goes down, it's like a, a U of pipe gets welded onto the back of the bike seat goes on top of that and then once I weld that thing all together it's putting the thing back together and then it's a stinking motorcycle so like I had the revelation the other day like I could I could ride this thing by the summer hmm if I knew how to ride a motorcycle <laughs> <laughs> so there's that there's that it could be rideable by the yeah. summer Oh, you, you won't have any trouble riding it once you, especially once it's like ready, you will be super motivated to get on it and, you know, learn it and stuff. I had a dream awesome. that I was like, because I've been reading a lot of things about how to test the motor. It was like, you can spray some oil fog in the cylinders and then put a little bit of gas in it. And then once all the battery and stuff is connected, like try to kick it over to see if you can get spark. And um, I had a dream where I was doing that and then it just like started up. I'm like, Nope, let's see if I can ride it. And then I got on it and just like rode it down the street. And then I rode it down Popped the bigger the street. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this is super <laughs> easy. 
Oh, look, my motorcycle can fly, too. That's <laughs> cool. Huh. I didn't <laughs> know this thing had a rocket water. launcher. <laughs> my, uh, unicorn horn. <laughs> oh, but now, like, I'm at the point that I didn't, I didn't really thought about. This is really dumb. I'm like, I should look at a helmet. <laughs> yeah, you Because <laughs> it's been, like, clean off the years and years of gunk and disgusting nastiness and rust off of this thing. That has been the the focus for such a long time, and now that I've done most of that, and I can see like, oh, I just need to put these pieces back together once the frame is is done. I'm like, and then it's a motorcycle, and I'm like, whoa! And now I'm at the point where like, you should think about basic motorcycle safety instead mm-hmm. of just scratching rust off of stuff. Yeah. Um, are you powder coating, painting? What are you doing with the frame? I don't know. I'm probably gonna paint it. Uh, because the one place I know that can powder coat it is in Louisville, and I'm pretty sure they're closed to the public right now. <laughs> Probably. Um, that Actually, the paint scheme is based off of these two colors I happen to have on hand. <laughs> oh, well, there so you go. So it's that, like, that metallic-y, dark grayish kind of black that we bought a whole bunch of. Yeah. I happen to have a can of that, too. So that's, like, the base color. And then there's a gold that I had for something... Oh, I was redoing the Infinity Gauntlet. I was weathering this toy Infinity Gauntlet, and it was the base of this, like, metallic, shiny kind of gold. So those are the two colors that the bike is going to have just because I happen to have them in a cabinet, and they look really nice together. There you go. (laughs) So I don't know if I can find a color powder coat to match that, so I might just paint it because I can can paint it in a couple minutes rather than sending it off and stripping down all the other stuff. So I don't know. This is a... This will be a good first project, and then maybe yeah. the second one I'll do it right. Well, I mean, you could always, like, you could paint it with whatever and then do a clear enamel coat over top of that, and that'll be a, a little idea. bit thicker, you know, protective layer if those colors you have are not enamel already, but probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. That's cool, But I, I took the – I got the Haynes manual, and I tried to, like, draw uh, a rough sketch of the of the bare bones bike. And then I could kind of, like, color in certain pieces to see if I liked them, like, shiny metal or if I wanted them to be black. Like the front uh, lower forks where it attaches to the front wheel and the big shock on the front. Like, it's just brushed aluminum, and it was all rusty and gross. and had stickers and crap on it, and I had to get all that off. And so now it's super clean, nice and shiny, like, ready to go. I replaced all the seals. It was great. And now I can look at it. Like, I don't know if I like it metal or if I want it black. Hmm. So I... I tear it down, I scrub all the rust and nastiness off, I service it like it should be serviced, and now I'm at the point where I get to decide aesthetically what it should look like. So I took that little pencil drawing, and was like I wrapped the exhaust in the pencil drawing, I added those, um, I forgot what they're called, little like accordion looking shock cover thingies. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah those little jobbies, I wrote, I'd put those on the, the pencil drawing to see if I liked them or not, because my Photoshop skills are not quite nice enough to be able to do this digitally so i don't know huh. it's it's fun and i was asking the kids like what color stuff should be and uh, my oldest son wanted to help me paint it so like i would i stabbed some bolts into like this cardboard box and i'm like go out there and paint all those hmm. yeah he saw into the spider verse and wants to spray paint everything so i gave him the opportunity to do so oh yeah, yeah. that's fun yeah Make sure he doesn't spray paint your walnut box. That'd be pretty funny. That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bummer. You're like, check out this. What did you do? <laughs> well, this beautiful walnut box you made for your motorcycle. A random thing. Cool. Well, anything else going on? I don't know. I hope everybody is okay. Yeah. And... It seems strange yet again. It's it, if people are even that have the free time enough to listen to this episode. We appreciate you. I understand that everybody's life has been upended. I'm I typically listen to podcasts on my commute. Don't really have a commute anymore. So if you're listening to this show, we are super grateful that you have taken the extra time out of your day to let us be a part of it. Uh, and for those people in our Maker Alliance, we also thank them. Yes. For going above and beyond and helping to support I Like to Make Stuff right now. Uh, We are four people trying to put out content to make your life a little bit better. 
and the Maker Alliance helps us do that. You can do that over on patreon.com slash I like to make stuff or on YouTube. You can become a YouTube member. We take both of those groups, smush them together, call them the Maker Alliance. Anthony just put out a cool video on how he's actually capturing all of this video and everything right now. So if you're interested in how to work OBS, how to do really cool kind of like telework that you can communicate to other people, head on over to patreon.com slash I like to make stuff and check it out. Yeah. Word. Uh, yeah, we are very grateful for all those people. Um, I realized that last week I didn't say what I was building. I don't think you're building anything, but check this out. Mm. I'm making, this is an older set, but this is Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Um, and this is one that was in a bag. And I got to put a little Darth Vader in there. Nice. Anyway, so this this thing's done. So since I can't go out and get new sets, I um, have plenty of my old ones that I can go through and get out. So that's cool. Um, all right. Well, yeah, I guess that's about it for this week. We don't really have much else to, to yammer about. Um, oh, we're going to play D&D. Yes. For all those people that were following along. Nicole and Tariq, when Geekscraft walked us through a whole host of hand-holding. Um, Anthony, is your <laughs> character all done? He says sort of, sort of. <laughs> Forby's sorta. character's finished. My character's finished. Bob knows that characters exist in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will try my best to make time. But for everybody listening, I told them not to wait on me to play because I just want to watch the game and, like, I wouldn't... I want to be a DM, so... I'm more interested in how the game runs and like what that role looks like. And so I may not have my character ready in time, but we'll see. I was kind of excited. And then YouTube recommended a video where Stephen Colbert plays D and D in a 30 minute session with this guy. And apparently I forgot the guy's name, but he runs a D and D channel. And Nicole was telling me he is like the master DM. He is hmm. a, an actor and a voice actor. And he all started with D and D and so does Stephen Colbert. So watching him geek out with this guy who is very good at storytelling, very good at like verbally painting this picture of the of the craft that, that they're walking through. Huh. Uh, watching him get really excited made me really excited to play. Interesting. Is so that if you guy... if you want to be a DM, you got to watch that video. Like that guy Is has it... a he set the bar at an unattainable level. Is it that Joe? Yeah, Joe Men Men I don't know how to say his last name. Oh no no not that guy. No. Oh, where did it go? It's um. Andrew Matthew Mercer? Yes. Oh. Okay. That dude. Stephen Colbert it always makes me smile at how much of a of a geek he is. Mm-hmm. And you see like he goes back to like being fourteen playing D D <laughs> with this guy and his like interview sitting across from him. And it's they're playing a game. They're not even having an interview. They're having a straight up D D game that the guy made specifically so it would be short enough to like capture and just the way that he tells a story and he like sets the scene and he, you can you can the imagery that he has in the story was awesome. Hmm. So it made okay. me really want to bust out Droxwick and his sword and shield and start <laughs> slaying things. It was cool. That's awesome. I'll have to make time to watch that. It's an hour long. Whew. I I was doing work and I had it playing in the background so I could listen to it while I was working. Hmm. Because it's just like Stephen Colbert, like, with this really nerdy 14-year-old grin on his face the entire time. Just his eyes wide. Just completely, like, in it. (laughs) He was lost in it. It was great. That's awesome. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us this week. And uh, Tamir and Josh, I hope you are well. Stay safe. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.